Welcome cosmic travelers to The Quantum Shift, where each week we leave the ordinary behind and step into a world of extraordinary possibilities. Imagine our reality being portaled into the realm of 5D wonderment, magic, and heartfelt living. This isn't just a wild concept. It's our new journey with the Archangels and the world they built for the Crystal DNA Hue. Joining us on this adventure is our guide, George, who is our personal galactic guide from the 13th dimension. His profound insights never stop challenging and expanding minds. Our perceptions are easing their way into the zero-point timeline of a new quantum reality and newly awakened expressions of wisdom and mastery. Every episode promises to leap into the unknown, sparking vibrant discussions that illuminate our minds and transform our souls. We are putting on the parachute and getting ready to jump into the unknown. Let's pull the ripcord together and leap into a new realm of spiritual awakening. Brace for the stars as the quantum shift merges with an in-depth journey with your cosmic navigators. Introducing your host of the quantum shift, Dr. Sam Muggsy and Digital Tom. Welcome to the quantum shift, where we explore the mysteries of the universe. Today's episode promises to be a thrilling journey as we explore the architect of creation. I can't wait to hear what Muggsy has to share with us in this show. So without further ado, let's dive right in. Hi Muggsy, how are you doing today? I'm doing great. I have some new intel from George, who is my master teacher, and he is a galactic most people don't know but he is the elephant man and he works with valiant thor he's first in command and he has his own ship and he's always teaching me things about our reality that i never knew and it's very interesting and fascinating and challenging at the same time so with that today i do have more information about the eclipse and us leaving the 3D paradigm. So can I get started? Please, let's get into it. I'm excited. Okay, first, what I've been taught. Now, if you can boil down a just or godly constitution, if I can use that term, if there's anything that expresses from what I've studied, God's will, his intent, there are three primary areas that we should be looking at and mastering, not only with ourselves, but with our day-to-day -day activities as well. How we raise our kids, how we apply ourselves at work, how we drive down the street, how we buy groceries. Everything should be based around these three primary, I want to say like um, schools of thought, because one is really a very large thought versus as little as I'm going to make it sound. But it's three primary areas. One is life. The protection, the love, the nurturing, the consciousness to build better life, not only for yourself, but everyone and everything around you. If we're not applying techniques and behaviors that nurture life, then we just don't get it as a spiritual being or as a evolved being. The ones that we respect and love that are our galactic friends, anything that has to do with life, especially when you're looking at your youth, everything centers around life. The second thing is, of course, consciousness. What we are doing in this experiment for the 3D is we are developing our individual consciousness. We separated from the group collective and we're here to better develop our own forms of thinkings, beliefs, mannerisms, etc. Okay, our theologies within our own brains. The third, of course, is your DNA. 
your DNA is this magnificent tool that has been given to us that with our consciousness and our love for life and living things, our DNA actually grows and expands. And this is what most people don't understand. It's not just a triple helix. It's going to continue to grow as we grow as beings, as we continue to climb the ladder of evolution within the seven realms that we live within, as we keep moving from school system to school system, we're going to keep building on this DNA. And I'm going to show you how. But within the 3D environment, the first lesson was these three primary things, learning about life and the value of all living things, two, developing your consciousness, thinking outside of the box, avoiding all of the traps, and third, valuing your DNA, your health, your, your frequency, your spiritual connection to all living things. So what George has showed me is that there's basically three types of people, okay? There's approximately 74.5% of the population has taken the jab for one reason or another. And he has broken it down to those, those groups can be broken down as far as the galactics can see, three types of people. One is the sheep. And the sheep you hear about all the time, but what it really stands for are people that have to be in a herd, people that have to do what their sister says, their best friend says, what their preacher says, what their employer says. They don't think for themselves. They have a herd mentality and they have a fear of standing out and being a black sheep or making their own choices and decisions about their life. Instead, their go-alongers is the best way to put it. They want to stay within the herd. And whatever the herd does, they're going to do, whether it's right or wrong. This way, they have found that they don't have to take responsibility what they do because the herd does it. So if the herd jumps off a cliff, they're going to go with it because they're part of the the sheep clan. Okay. Number two is the cows and the cows are the people that are out in the pasture. They're eating, they're happy. They got sunlight. They don't care what's going on. They don't care what's happening on the farm. They don't care what's happening in the city. They don't care about nothing because all they care about is that their domain, their area of grass is plentiful they have water, they have sun. So they're not looking around them to see what's going on. They have their head down, just grazing. That's all they care about. Okay. The third is the beached whales and the beached whales are the people that don't want to take responsibility for their lives at all. What they want to do is just plop on your couch and say, here, do me, fix me. Here, here, make me better. And a lot of these people that are beached whales gravitate to Western medicine or to the legal system or other systems like, like unemployment and things like that because they want the society to take care of them. They want free this, free that. They want their insurance card. They want to be able to go to a doctor that they can go, I got, ouch, I got this little thing right here. What do I do? Oh, I take this pill. They don't have to think. I believe that the monsters in the machine that were created, the beast and how this got out of hand, had a lot to do with these three groups, but primarily these beached whales that don't want to think, they don't want to think out of the box. It hurts too much. Tom and I have heard it. We've, we've been out, we've gone to garage sales, we've gone shopping and people will say, I, I don't want to think, I, I don't want to think that hard. I'm not that good of a thinker. So I'm just going to trust the science. 
not realizing that the science is fake. It's been altered to manipulate people that people don't care because they don't want to take the time to go research because they're out grazing. They're out following the herd or they're out doing what they're doing. So the last one is the black sheep. And the black sheep thinks for themselves. They research. They don't take what everybody else says. They don't follow groups. They don't care about celebrities. They're not going to religion. They're not indoctrinated. Even if they're going to a university or they're going to school, you see little kids that are thinking for themselves. And parents are getting smart. They're starting to reward their kids and bring out more of that individualism and that thinking that is so precious to an evolved consciousness. That's a sign of genius. People that are asking why, how, and are willing to go look. One of the things that I like to do in my life is I don't like to make mistakes. Like if I'm going to be building something, like let's say I'm building a, a greenhouse. I'm not just going to go out and build that greenhouse because I don't know anything about it and I know I'm going to be stupid. So what I do is I go and I learn from other people and I keep a notebook of different things that people have done. What are they doing in Thailand? Because they're, they're geniuses at coming up with ideas from nothing. Or what are they doing at the school? What are they doing in horticulture? What are they doing in electrical culture to grow these better gardens with less effort? What are they feeding the plants? So once I study all that, and then I come up with my own plan that fits my reality, where I live, what I'm doing, my water, my, my sunlight, my heat, I consider all those factors and then I go out and start to deploy what I've learned from other people. And I make less mistakes, but I don't make ginormous mistakes, but I still don't have my rhythm down yet. Usually it will take two or three times seasons of growing things to figure out, teaming them up, figuring out what bugs to have, things like that, what soil to have. It takes a little bit of practice, but then once you get it, it's like you're a master and things just kind of grow by themselves because you know where to place things in your yard. You know where to put for the right sun, for the right water, for the right ingredients. So I, I employ those types of practices with everything that I do, even if I'm going to be folding clothes, which sounds stupid, but there's better ways to fold your sheets. There are better ways to fold your socks if you go and look, and it makes your life easier. Once you learn it, you got it, and then you own it. Then you just keep moving on. And then your life just gets easier and easier and easier. But we got to break out of this ignorance and wanting to keep doing the same monotony over and over without building upon our own knowledge. Okay, so there is a doctor. His name is Dr. Robert Mendelssohn. And it's spelled M-E-N-D-E-L-S-O-H-N. -E and he wrote a book. He's an author of Confessions of a Medical Heretic and also Male, M-A-L-E, Practice. And he was head of the AMA Educational Division. And what he was disclosing is not only happening in the medical industry, but also within the police department, within the sheriffs, within the school system. And it's also happening in the legal arena. I learned this when I was studying law several years ago, is that when you are somebody that questions authority, you question the practices. 
you get marked down. Your grades go to C's and D's because you're not absorbing what they're telling you and then spitting it back out. The people that are easy to mind control, that don't question authority, they can just take the garbage from the books, think that it's all that is there, and they don't bother to question anything. Those are the people that succeed and get the A pluses within the industries. These are the people that accelerate. They're the ones that get sponsors. They're the ones that get bank loans. They're the ones that get the jobs. They're the ones that climb the ranks. They're the ones that get into secret societies. They're the ones that climb the ranks within societies. And then those are the people that are handpicked, moved into government official positions or CEOs of these um, not so nice companies. Okay. And everybody knows this. Everybody knows this about the police department. They're not hiring the best and the smartest police department individuals. They're, they're hiring people that they can mold and manipulate into doing what is mirrored to them, what they are told to do, and they don't step out of the box. Dr. Robert Mendelssohn says the same thing is happening within Western medicine. Doctors, when they go to med school, they have to get a sponsor that pays half of their educational fees. And the only way to really get a sponsor is if you're willing to not question authority and just do as they say. The more that you can do that and you erase your individualism and you become a robot, the further you're going to get within their industry. That's the way it's set up. And you're rewarded handsomely for doing so. Of course, it could be bribes. It could be um, vacations. It could be vehicles. It could be a promotion. They have many ways to promote people that do as they say and eliminate the consciousness or the thinking of that individual. A lot of doctors that have question authority, they lose their position, they lose their license, and they could even be chased out of the United States or they could be murdered. And we've seen this happen with Tesla, we've seen it with Royal Ripe, and we've seen it with many other people throughout our history. So you have to go and look and do some research for yourself. But the police, the MDs, the lawyers, the judges are sort of the pillars of our society that keep everything together in this Luciferian reality that we've been living in. So in order to eliminate it so that humanity can be free, so that we can be Become smarter, we can enhance our consciousness so that we can flip this dilapidated system that's based on chaos. We can eliminate that and now start to employ things that make sense and are more logical. We'll also create a system that is based on rewarding intelligence instead of people that are zombies. You know, people that just follow the rules, they're, they're not the smart ones, okay? The smart ones are the ones that have been suppressed. And in this new reality, they're going to be rewarded, not only from the universal energies, but also from the AI system. You will see that they will, will move forward in a very quick fashion. Do you have anything to, to question about that? I was thinking about, um, you know, that video you sent me about the CIA spy manipulation tactics, Rice. Yes. What you're saying kind of goes along with that as well, the manipulation tactics. Absolutely. Um, so what people don't know is that there are four primary ways to manipulate people. If somebody has a weak constitution, 
They have poor family values. Their dad was a schmuck. My left early um, mom might be on drugs or something. And the system does seek these people out. They have tests. When you take your test for the bar, that is to see who can be mind controlled and who can't. These tests are set up for this. So the rice is R, riches. So riches is what is being given to these people to give them a personality, to give them the stature of wealth that has a pseudo meaning of success. It's not. It's somebody that was willing to give themselves up for money, a car, a mansion, um, the best jobs, the best vacations, things like that, the best clothes, right? All designer clothes. So I is ide ideology. Those that follow the ideology that they want you to follow. Right now, we're seeing a lot of that with the transgender movement, right? Whoever is following that ideology are the ones that are going to get rewarded. Or even those that are following the Catholic religion, which is a satanic religion. If you're enmeshed into that, they can manipulate you very easy. The C is coercibility. If they can coerce you, meaning that one of Robert Robert's books, M.D. Robert, Robert is the one where it's called um, the male practice. And what that is, it's a book that talks about how MDs, doctors, are coercing women because women won't stick up for themselves. They've been beaten down or they're used to being submissive or their religion says, let the man control everything. So when they go to a doctor and the doctor says, I need your eyeballs, the, the woman's going to say, okay, because they're not used to standing up to males in a white coat with a stethoscope or a black robe or a badge. They're suppressed. So the industry absolutely takes advantage of all women. They try to coerce them, right? C. And E is going to be emotion. And Obama wrote a book in his biography, and he said manipulating people through their emotions is a tactic that is so underused. More people should be manipulating to get what they want using somebody's emotions. And Tom and I experience this a lot if you're working with a dog rescue. A lot of these dog rescues will do things so insane, like cutting out a dog's eye because it has a minor infection. Instead of using Neosporum, they'll have the eye removed so people will feel sorry for that dog and take them, right? Right? It's insane what people will do to manipulate other people through their emotions. And I find that a lot of rural areas really do use the emotional guilt trips. A lot of women actually will manipulate their husband with their diseases, and we've actually, if you're in the medical industry, if you're a naturopath, you've taken a course on it. And every time I take a new course that has to do with some type of doctoring using natural medicine, there's always some piece in it that talks about how people will use their diseases to manipulate their spouse so that they don't leave, right? We've seen this... Even I've had cases where mothers will do their children. They'll make their children sick and they got cancer and they got, right. That's all curable mind stuff. Mind, we already know cancer is nothing more than parasites and candida. 
but the mom will stick the kid in the hospital to manipulate the dad so that the dad doesn't leave. And when you start to look in the history between the parents, you will see that one of the people was manipulating the other one to stay because now they have some disease. It's crazy what's been happening, but the rice method absolutely can seek out and destroy all the people that are weak in their constitution. Would you also say that E is also ego as well? The ego. It can be absolutely the ego can be weaponized against their own person. One of the things that I find kind of comical is that some people that are in their ego, they always wear it on their sleeve and they'll, they'll, they like spew it in your face and won't stop because they're trying to convince you that there's some superstar and instead, what they're doing is they're telling the listener how to manipulate them. You can use their ego against them so easily. It's amazing. You could just get them started on one thing. This is where the people that are narcissistic or bipolar, they will give you certain signs. And if you are trained to listen to that, you can pick up that that person is motivated through their ego. And then you know how to manipulate them. It's easy. It's very easy. Anything else? No, that's that just, I, I knew that played a, a big role in um, the emotional ego. And we had just talked about that earlier today. So I just wanted to mention that. So the DNA is way more valuable than what anybody's talking about. It is so, it's godly. I don't know how else to say it. It is this magical, wonderful, intelligent thing that every single cell in our body has. And what the DNA does is when we go through one of these experiments to increase our intellect and our consciousness is we jump into an arena like the 3D. And the 3D is where each individual will go to a certain continent. Like let's say Japan. We're going to start with Japan. You will learn how to be the female and the male of that area and that culture and as you master those skills that are supposed to be developed there you get it's like a light goes on in your dna so all that de dead dna that the scientists will not acknowledge this is what's happening is that you light up that chromosome area of the dna that says you've passed the school of the male and the female in Japan. Once you do that, then you're going to go to China. And it's, this is out of order. Of course, there's other areas you can see where you might start first. Or you can go wherever you want according to what your lesson plan is before you incarnate into this environment. But then you go to China and you become the male and then the female. And as you pass those courses, another block in your DNA chain will ignite and it becomes activated. This is what they're talking about. When you turn your silver into gold and you set your gold back in the manger, that's what's activating this, this block within your DNA chain. Then you go to Thailand, you become the male, you become the female. And when you achieve those goals, you now activate another block within your chain of DNA. And each time that you do this, you become more of that master. You start to live your life with more purpose, consciousness, compassion, 
but also with a sword and learning how to protect yourself. We're not doormats. Nobody should have carpeteria on their back. We need to protect as well as love because without protection, what is love but a doormat? Love only becomes important when you're willing to protect it. So you have to have the right and the left hand. So what we've done is we've gone through this 3D school and each time we've activated another block within our DNA block chain where do you think they got the idea and it becomes activated and then when you're at the final ground which i think pop probably not always but might be the usa because the usa was the darkest and you have to get through that that fire before you can escalate into a higher dimension is that once you get to that area, you now have the 13th DNA strand developed, which is your shield of God, which now you can, while you're awake, this is why you're moving into the fifth dimension. Those people that haven't learned the lesson plans from each country which is probably about 74% of the population, they're going to have to go back and get reschooled to better learn how to protect the self, the consciousness, how to build the I am, how to develop your own personality. And more importantly, there is a balance that happens within what I call the, the golden star the Druze star, which is multicolored, which is the personality aspect. It all has to be in balance. And then you develop the crystal star. And the crystal star, when you over, overlay all three of those, you've achieved your Merkaba, which is what we're supposed to be doing, which is now your ascension key into this fifth dimension. This is what everybody's done. This is why you're royals. You went into the depths and think about it for a little bit. I mean, it, it's bad, but it's good that we've had these snakes on our tail because otherwise we would have become complacent. There has to be a reward and a punishment system in order to motivate the individual to do what they need to do to accomplish these godly schools, if you will. And it's our DNA that's everything. Our DNA is attached to our consciousness, our soul, our eternal bodies, everything. So we're not here for the Nike tennis shoes. We're not here to have a Louis Vuitton purse. We're here to achieve greatness within our DNA, to activate these blockchains within it, to grow that 13th strand and get the master level Merkaba into the fifth dimension. Okay, so let's talk about the eclipse, all right? The eclipse, if you imagine like a teeter-totter, right? And you have one that's down and one that's up. If you don't know what a teeter-totter is, go look it up, pause the video, and then come back. But this loop system of learning and education is set up in a crazy eight, and it intersects within the middle. And this is where the cross is. It's the cross of consciousness or Christ, one and the same. So the bottom would be the underworld. And when you circle around, you come back to a cross and it's at that cross section, the intersection, it goes up into the golden ages, the bronze ages, 
And then you start to descend in the Iron Ages. And then, of course, you go in the underworld. That's the way the schools are set up within the seven realms. We all go through it to develop this evolved DNA, which is the God DNA strand. That's what we're activating. So when you are coming out of the underworld, which we are doing now, we are now at the cross or the intersection where we're going to go up. And here's what's amazing is that there is another earth that they call the dark earth and it's or the shadow and it's been hidden. And what it's going to do is that as we come up, this is the east gate and the west gate reference. When we come up around the bottom of the loop and we're going up towards the top, towards the east, and in the middle is the cross, the shadow earth is moving from the east into the west. So it's going from right to left. And we are moving up into the cross from the left to the right. And in the middle, it will intersect, which causes the eclipse. This eclipse is where the, we actually move so close to each other that the souls that are meant to stay on a 3D planet will be moved into the shadow earth. And the people that have achieved their Merkava will move into the fifth. So it's going to switch places, if you will. And we are going to go into the fifth. So we, we cross arms, which becomes the X. This is why everybody's talking about the X. It's on everything, Space Force, Space X. Even Nike has it on theirs. A lot of people are talking about this X. Because we're going to move to the right through the east gate. And the people that stay in 3D move through the west gate. They go on the left side. And then they're going to circle around the crazy eight on the upper side. They're going to go through a golden age, a bronze age. And then it's going to start to descend into the iron age. And then it's going to flip in, go through the cross. And it, the cross section, and it's going to move to the bottom. And that bottom lasts for about 6,500 years of learning lessons of a very intense kind, which is going to make you smarter. It's going to make you want to develop your ESP, your telepathy, your clairvoyance, and all of that. And what's crazy is that we have protection as archangels. We do have a dragon that protects us. And as we've achieved this Merkaba, our, our dragons are coming back and our lives are starting to change. Our thinking is starting to change. We're becoming braver. We're becoming more enlightened, meaning thinking more in depth into areas and becoming smarter. So we're now moving into that East gate. What's funny is that the people that didn't make it through the 5d, they're circling around and going through the shadow 5d planet and going to recycle within the 5d. So we're going to be joining them and they will be mentoring us to develop into being better people as they're developing their DNA strand. And what's crazy in this or fun is that when you look at the peace sign that we have, it's a circle with the line down and then the three on the bottom. That is a closed DNA strand. It's locked. 
And it's the same thing that happened with the nanotechnology, the screwdriver around our DNA producing the mRNA is the peace sign. The people that are moving into the 5D actually have the flipped peace sign, which is the flower or the tree of life that's now opening up all those branches, meaning that your DNA now is flowering, it's opening up. And those DNA strands are really like um, little mini um, satellite dishes where you can pick up on what's happening in other dimensions, other realms. Our realm is from left to right, it's on a flat plane. Each dimension, third, fifth, sixth, seventh, etc., each has its own dome. And right now you see Korea, I, I wouldn't be surprised if Japan starts, Russia starts, they're going to be shooting up missiles straight up to rip down that Terra dome so that when the earth moves through that cross section can move over to the fifth. So each area, each dimension has its own dome. And then there's a great dome over all seven. And the people in the fifth, the sixth, and the seventh dimension, etc., they're all breaking their own Terra dome for this big shift as we all align with the planets. So everybody's going to break down their Terra dome and we're going to move our planet into the fifth. The shadow is going to come into the third and maintain that position in the 3D. And then a new Terra dome will be established and keep you there for as long as it takes to develop those lessons on the new planetary system or the new school that you're on. Any questions? Yes, I'm sure a lot of people are wondering, so as we move through that cross section, the cross, and we go up, one goes into the east gate, one goes into the shadow earth, are the people alive when this happens, or are they transitioning through that process? So when they go through, uh, the people, the 73 and change percent are going to just wake up the next day um, on this shadow earth, not realizing that anything happened, right? Well, they're actually asking people to go out and watch the eclipse because when you do, it's going to change the way that you see things. You're going to have a new type of a consciousness. You're being awakened, if you will. Some of your dormant DNA is coming to life and you're going to be able to see your your abilities are coming back. And something else that's really kind of cool too, is that as your perception changes due to this new consciousness in this light, that anybody that is a holographic demon, you'll be able to see them. So you'll be able to see them in government or the medicine industry or the judges and their faces are distorted and we're already starting to see videos of this people that are going to recycle into 3d they can't see it they still don't see it just like they don't see the ships there they don't see some of the things that are happening around us that the people that are ascending can see so as your eyes are developing your consciousness registering what you're seeing is developing, which is really kind of amazing um, what's happening. But I wouldn't be surprised. Like you're going to go to the store and you might be with your mom or your daughter or your sister or whoever. And there's like a demon standing right in front of you. And you could tell because their face are distorted. You're going to see it, but the person next to you won't. And until we make this transition, which is happening now, it's Saturday, Sunday, and Monday, and there might even be a little bit of a tail end on Tuesday, we're going to start changing into this new fifth reality. 
and we're going to go through that east gate which is the eclipse it's it's all part of it we're going through the hole and um there are some people that won't they will be moved on through magnetics that we are being magnetically pulled to the planet we should be on that has a connection to our resonance what our frequency is so if you have a low frequency you're going to go on the shadow planet and if you have a high frequency you're moving on to the evolved planetary system and you'll go through the east gate that's the way this is happening and the people that are uh asleep won't know they'll just be on another planet and they'll be going back through 3d through the golden age on the upper side of that loop of the eight and will be moved over. That's some will go and some will stay. There is a episode within Futurama that shows this happening, how the planet is moving um, right over and that they had to take a rocket to move to the new planet. So it, it, there are shows out there that are actually demonstrating how this works to help us awaken and give us some kind of justification that we're seeing these things now, which is kind of nice. So it's in Futurama. I don't remember the name of the episode, but it's there. Do you have any other questions? No, I just know that people are going to be freaking out when they see these <laughs> other people changing and morphing into something different. I think the people that are awake were expecting it. We already know the white hats and the galactics have been conditioning us and helping us with our awareness so that we're not shocked. Um, I do know that there's a lot of these beings still around. Some people are reporting that they're all gone. Maybe the Dracos are all gone, but they're still demons around us and they are being videotaped and if you have the eyes to see you could see that their faces are deformed their eyes are slanted their face are drooping their mouths are getting really big i mean just crazy stuff and their eyeballs will move in a direction that ours don't and you'll know that they're not real so yeah but i think a lot of us I might be shocked, but I'm expecting it. And I think a lot of other people will too. So in our history, something that's also really confused me is the writings of Enoch. And some of the stuff from Enoch is not good, but some of it is good. So I was thinking, well, how can this be? And what the deep state did to track trick us is there's always two and if you look at the history of Enoch Enoch was a name that was very popular to use so there's more of more than two Enochs it's like every generation somebody within the bloodline would name their kid Enoch so there's a bunch of Enoch so when they say Enoch is which one who did what? You know, the original, which one's the original, the one that stands out. We really don't know what's going on. And Russia now is exposing that Jesus was black. Well, Jesus was really Baal and he was the Satan. That's why they have this satanic church Literally, they have a satanic coliseum in Italy by the Vatican. The Vatican was the house of Satan. People are all starting to see it, which is this bald character or Horus. He had many different names. And he looked up to his, his uncle, who was in Lil. And that's who they were following as Lucifer. And all of this is coming out. It's within the black... Um, people, they're also saying that a lot of the black people, not all, okay, but a lot of them are the original people from the 3D environment. And that's why you started having um, the takeover of the, the earthly people because they would target the black people. Not always. Some of the 
other races now are the Pleiadians, Andromedans, Arcturians, and various other star seeds from other planets. And I believe that we all came here to learn from each other. There's nobody that is better than somebody else. If you think that, then you need to recycle. There is benefit in every single person, whether good or bad, you can still see a benefit somewhere if you look. I also want to add, too, that you've mentioned many times, like, you know, when we say Palladian, a lot of people would think that, you know, blue eyes, uh, blonde hair, but Palladians also looked Asian. Uh, did you different races, um, they look different. So when you say black, that's just a, a blank statement. It could, different races had black um, people in the race as well, right? Absolutely. Absolutely. And there's no absolutes on this, okay? Because we've, we've been infiltrated, so we don't know where, who, what, when. And I can tell you that I've had African-American professors that were some of the nicest, best people you'd ever want to meet. I mean, they would take you under their wing and teach you everything that they knew. And yet you could see white people that are just trashy. They're like 3D earthlings. So there's no absolutes. But there is a space force individual that is from the Palladian system, which is right in another realm over fifth dimension that he's from Mu, the planet Mu, and his people were also put into the Japanese environment. But it's not an absolute because like I said, with the DNA, we're learning from every continent and we've been man and we've been woman. And then when you graduate from that lesson plan, you get a block within your blockchain in your DNA gets activated. So every time you pass that class, what happens is the silver in your, your, your spinal fluid turns to gold and then you sit in your manger that activates that cell block within your DNA. That means you're done with that, that lesson plan and then you move into the next one. So one of the things that I want to leave everybody with, if you are looking to have an ET friend and a mentor, there's two requirements that George has asked for. Number one is to start taking classes in critical thinking. And these are for free on YouTube. People are absent of critical thinking. A lot of people, some of us get it, some of us don't, some are better than others. And if you're looking to team up with an ET person, you must have critical thinking skills. So spend some time, take some class, and, and you want to take a couple of classes to make sure that you get it. This is something that you need to know like you're breathing. It has to be something that is innate within your system, within your personality, okay? The other thing is you must learn computer skills. You can't get away from it. There are so many people that have been fighting it and they don't want to do it and they think if they pr push it under the rug that they'll never have to see it again. And that's not true. Everywhere that we're going, everything that we're going to be doing, everything within the universe is mathematical based. The computer system is a mathematical program. Every single school, every single uh, planetary system is set up like a computer. So if you're not learning a computer system, if you don't comprehend math, if you don't have math skills, you're going to have a really hard time in the new world. And I don't want to see any of my people suffer in any way. So if you guys can start now, when you first start something, anything, gardening, cooking, sourdough, pizza, Whatever you're doing, even relationships, 
We're always going to fail in the beginning. The more skills that you can get under your belt will help you accelerate at what you're doing. And then you become a master. And the more areas of your life that you can master, the easier it will be to not only integrate within the 5D, but then to escalate and move into the 6th, the 7th, and so on. There is no lids that will keep us contained within the higher realms. You can start to escalate and go wherever you want to go. The key is going to be that we are joining a galactic society. We are going to become a multi-planetary system, and we're going to have visitors from other planetary systems. And if you would like to learn from them, you're going to need to know computers. You're going to have to understand math. You're going to have to understand critical thinking and boundaries. If you don't know that, then you're going to have a really hard time in the new world. If you're willing to accept and move into this, you're going to have a great time. It's going to be easy. You're going to have lots of friends and money will just flow to you abundantly because now you're playing the game the way that it's supposed to be. In the old world, we were being eaten by snakes. In the new world, we'll be rewarded with, with monetary uh, means or abundance in our life, in our reality, in everything that we do. And we'll have the highest quality friends, relationships, and experiences. So with that, I'm going to say have a great day. Enjoy the eclipse and let's get to 5D. Love you guys. Peace out and stay safe. Bye, you guys. Thanks for joining us. As today's journey through the quantum shift concludes, remember that our voyage into 5D wonderment and magic continues. With George, our galactic guide, and the guidance of the Archangels, we're unlocking new realms of wisdom and mastery. Thank you for joining Dr. Sam Muggsy and Digital Tom on this enlightening path. Keep your parachute ready for our next leap into the unknown as we explore the vastness of spiritual awakening. Until we meet again, keep your gaze on the stars and your heart open to the universe's endless possibilities. Farewell, and see you next time on The Quantum Shift.